a uh, very good morning to all our viewers today we have with us a successful seasoned uh, entrepreneur who has been in this space since 20 years now he has been um, uh, a disruption business strategist from IIM Posey Code, an advisory member of the Department of Science and Technology Technical Air Resource Unit for Scientific Analysis, Management and Coordination, Clean Air Technology Unit. And at present, he's working on the development of green mines, clean fuels, including ethanol and compressed biogas. A very warm welcome, Rajiv. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for, for giving this opportunity and uh, it's really very pleasure that uh, I am just, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing my journey and you can say that uh, this journey has started uh, almost a decade, we can say that two decades back when I personally came to Delhi from one small town. And uh, from there and onwards, the journey started. I have a very diversified field uh, knowledge and uh, I am actually a good learner. So I always love to uh, learn something from you. So, and I hope by today's sessions also, I will learn from all of you. And uh, I will just, uh, you know, uh, uh, share some of my views, which uh, may or may, may be uh, an, an opportunities for uh, new ventures and uh, new organizations, or you can say the new startups who are coming in this field. Sure. So you've studied disruptive strategy and had an MBA in that and uh, worked for several not-for-profits in the environment uh, domain. And now you are leading Ecopreneur. Uh, so uh, what was the inflection point? Why did you start Ecopreneur? And um, what motivates you every morning to work towards it? So uh, actually the environmental sector is not new for me. I have started my own venture called Environmental Carbon Solutions in 2009. Since 2009, I am working in this. Merely on the, uh, you know, all the Panchabhuta elements, we say that, you know, the air elements, water elements, uh, even the fire elements, which we call the energy elements. Also, like, you know, the space elements, sound and other acoustics things. And uh, uh, things started back when uh, recently I was doing a course with IIT Delhi uh, for the design thinking and innovation. During this time, I got like, you know, uh, assignment where they have asked me if you are from this environmental sector why don't you do something very dis, uh, you know disruptive uh, uh, you know eco solutions for this carbon monitoring and uh, carbon related because carbon credit i was doing since 2012 and uh, there is no such kind of uh, mechanism or you can say that uh, there is no such kind of uh, uh, portal or uh, instrument is there where we can record, you know, how much uh, carbon is emitted and how much we have to, uh, you know, uh, going to be, you know, in terms of neutralization, how much it is going to be and uh, what kind of an uh, balancing is required. And uh, especially uh, if you look at that, the three major sectors where I work, the one is about the clean fuels, because uh, when you study about these, uh, you know, carbon and methane emission, the major uh, culprit is about the major, you can say that uh, the biggest challenge is coming from this uh, transportation sector. So the transportation sectors emits almost like, you know, 43 to 44% as a carbon emission, which is the main pollutant. Second one, which is about once again, our uh, waste, which is going in a dump site and methane is there. Definitely the agricultural is also the one. The agricultural uh, sector is uh, largest uh, in terms of uh, methane emissions, not in the carbon emission, but definitely the methane and agricultural along with that, you know, uh, what you call even the uh, mining sectors also plays a role. So last year, what we did it, we did it some program with the various IITs where we have done the brainstorming sessions with the various scientists, researchers, and uh, uh, you can say that, you know, even the individual startups and entrepreneurs that to understand which sectors is going to be a major uh, 
contributors towards that you know reducing the carbon emissions as india has already signed an uh, you know agreement for the paris uh, commitments and by even honorable our prime minister honorable prime minister has already uh, mentioned that that uh, we will by 2070 we will become that you know uh, carbon neutral so what kind of initiative these inst uh, organization or that you know even the departments even that uh, institutions should take up uh, so that you know the we can mitigate all these things and we can become like a carbon neutral so this journey started from there and just two years back, I thought, okay, let me start my own uh, startup. Very first times I started and the name which is created like an ecopreneurs. We are all now, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, but uh, ecologically entrepreneurs is required because those who are working in the environmental sector. So we have just, you know, why not let's uh, bring all these ecopreneurs and uh, start our journey so that's way i started and uh, me along with uh, two more members are there and uh, from the and total like you know the team which is uh, including the various scientists and organizations heads are there it's almost we are almost uh, 80 plus uh, researchers and the scientists who are working in this sector so uh, from there uh, we just started and now things are moving very well that's very interesting. Now, uh, all of you all are entrepreneurs and you all are uh, also ecopreneurs. So, what are the specific initiatives that you all take uh, uh, in this uh, company? Uh, if you would like to share, uh, throw some light. So, uh, yes. so, some of the area where I have already mentioned you is that, you know, uh, the first one, which is like, you know, the mining sectors. We have targeted the first one as in the mining sector. And we uh, introduced a concept about that, you know, green mines. So green mines is one of the area where we just say that, you know, after the mining, you know, that uh, where we, where, where we you do the minings, uh, after the excavations, they generally just uh, put the red mud or, you know, even uh, what you call uh, fly ash and other things to refill that. Because now the government has already mandated that, you know, all the minings, needs to be refilled and all the mines need to be refilled and uh, revegetation needs to be done. So we basically do a research and uh, then we uh, guide them, these uh, individual owners or you can say the mine owners, how to, you know, uh, make this mines as a green mines because whatever we have already taken in terms of, you know, the oats and other things, now it has to be, uh, and we have already, you know, uh, cut it and uh, millions of, uh, you know, tons of, uh, you can say the trees and uh, so much of carbon is already emitted. Now he has to go and ensure that okay, whatever we have already consumed or we have already collected, uh, we just need to uh, ensure that, you know, it has to be, uh, we can say that, you know, ki hame wapas se apne, you know, uh, what you call uh, earth ko wapas apna hi sara solutions ke saath dena hai. So that's where we have started the Green Mines concept. We are already uh, executing these projects in Orissa, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh, where we have done uh, the refillings of mines. Uh, definitely the major two institutions like IIT Mumbai and Niri Nakur has played a very big role on that. And uh, apart from this, like MS Swaminathan Research Center in Orissa, they have guided well what kind of you know, local species should be developed, how these, uh, uh, you know, vegetations needs to be uh, ensured that the regrow has to be done and everything needs to be done as per that, you know, standards of, you know, uh, government of India norms and everything. So this is the first area where we have uh, our, uh, you know, our team is working very well. The second one, which once again, we come from, as an, I have already mentioned you, the clean fuels, so government of India has already mandated that in a clean fuels where that uh, they are taking the initiatives in terms of like, you know, the CBG compressed biogas, which is coming from agro and uh, uh, legacy waste. Second one, which is uh, the area like, you know, uh, uh, what you call the ethanol. So blending of ethanol with the second generation ethanols, which is now also started. And the third one, which is like, you know, agro waste to converting as a uh, fuel bio pallets as a uh, clean fuels. So the cooking and other purposes can be resolved. 
so this is the area where we are right now working and uh, recently we got like in our patented also one this we have developed and designed the smokeless chulha which is uh, working with the bio pallets which is coming directly from the agro waste or the forest waste or whatever we put chief waste and other things even like you know the peanuts and uh, their residues waste and other things so we are using that and making the bio pallets and from bio pallets to uh, cooking uh, meals for the especially midday meals in the schools so these are the initiatives which have already we have taken and uh, we are ensuring that uh, claiming of these carbon credits from these initiatives is also be taken Uh, that is uh, extremely interesting for the work that uh, you all are doing. Um, now, uh, what are the initiatives on carbon credits in India? And if, uh, since you all are working in this, if you would like to share some case studies, uh, how you all are doing it for the corporates or for the government, uh, and uh, do you see any policies and regulations coming into picture for this as well? Yes. Uh... Government of India has already started this initiatives called the Green Credits, and this is merely uh, for the institutions or the organizations who are going to be uh, claimed as they are to be become a carbon neutral. Every institution needs to be now become a carbon neutral, whether it's aviation sector, whether it's a construction sector, whether it's a steel sectors, whether it's a cement. Every industry needs to go on the carbon credit. Even the like, you know, the cities, like the cities has to be also become a carbon neutral. So they can claim that, you know, my city is 100%, not only the clean, also we are the carbon neutral. So uh, for that's the reason we started this ecopreneurs and considering about the evaluations. For an example, let's take it like, you know, some city is doing very well and they have developed an one STP there. It's very simple. It's a government procedure and every city now will have to go with this uh, STP. But because of this STP, how much water is getting treated? What is the, you know, uh, water recycling process we are using? How this re, uh, using of this water is getting done? And, you know, the city should claim that, you know, okay, I have already done this initiatives and because of this initiative, this much carbon emission and this much, uh, you know, my methane emission is getting reduced. In some the same way, like, you know, solid waste management also. When we say that, you know, we are just dumping, earlier we are dumping, now we have, you know, the waste processing unit where the waste is getting processed and, uh, you know, it is getting used as an, uh, you know, uh, for the power generation related activities. So uh, these initiatives should be also be counted. We can't say that, you know, uh, my city is doing nothing because we, it's just policy. We have already done this and... Uh, we were, you know, uh, under the government uh, initiative we have done. Definitely, these are the initiative which is the governments and departments are already taking. But we should say that, you know, this is what my current carbon emission level is there. And by 2030, definitely because of our introduction of new processes, new systems, new technology, new innovations and uh, new initiatives even, uh, you know. So we should just count it, you know, how much carbon is reduced and how it is going to be compensated. So we have suggested that, you know, though definitely the government of India has already rolled out this uh, green credit mechanism. Very soon it will be applicable and eligible for all this, uh, you know, uh, uh, places or the all the organizations and everything. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, all these initiatives will come under this uh, green credit initiatives and it is a very good opportunity for indian organization especially like you know the big banks uh, like you know the airport authorities and uh, you can say that even uh, big uh, organizations like nalco balco and these they are going to be in a very soon uh, take up these initiatives and this will uh, give them a much more comfortable way of uh, you know uh, taking these projects so do you see any uh, uh, PPP initiatives coming up where you would be assisting all these big companies and ensuring they get carbon credits? Yes. Uh, for an example, we have recently uh, uh, as started in a project called the AgroVolitic, uh, where the, you know, uh, it's a new concept where we are saying the generation of uh, power in the agriculture, when whenever we are saying that you know solar power plant, we put it the solar power plant uh, generally come on the agricultural field, and the agricultural land cannot be used for, 
fairly more on that related. So what we have suggested ki now, dual usability of the land. The first is that the land will be used as the same purposes for you know agricultural and the same land is getting used for you know power generation solar power generations also and uh, because of when we are putting all these things in a sedded area it's almost like in you know, a 50% we keep it in a sedded and 50% on that so plant yields also increases the water consumption patterns reduces and all this thing so whatever be these innovative technologies or innovative uh, processes we adopt there is an, a possibility of reduction of carbon emissions. So we are just counting these carbon emissions and ensuring that we say that when we say that, uh, okay, let's uh, take these initiatives as an, uh, one of your programs and one of your ideas. So for an example, we reach to uh, these uh, big corporates and we say that, you know, why don't you fund this? Because the farmer cannot adopt this. So let's become and claim the carbon credit of these initiatives and you earn based on this. So it's a it's like you know the win-win situation for all, and when you are earning, so you are ensuring also your the return values go to increase. It's not just only about selling off your electricity; also you are getting an, uh, some extra benefits, financial benefits out of this carbon credit, and that's why the these big guys are already taking uh, and supporting these initiatives. I see that's very interesting. Uh... Uh, now, uh, since you have been in this space since a uh, very long time, I would like to understand from you um, uh, what is the requirement or need for the CSR sustainability ESG professionals in this uh, space, and um, are you uh, like just what is the requirement, and do you all engage with them? It's very simple. Uh... We would say that everyone who just want, you know, uh, to be, to support this, you know, uh, environmental ecosystem or everyone who is uh, just having a feel, ki, yes, I want to give something for my mother. Uh, so uh, they should take and any projects can be counted. It's not about just, you know, just going on the clean fuels or the big mining projects or uh, no, nothing. Even like, you know, just placing and uh, putting a tree is itself is an, uh, uh, an a big support systems which is there. So let's suppose somebody uh, uh, like, you know, the CSR company or organization willing to work on the water, they should come and they say that, you know, whatever with the water bodies are there, we are going to uh, take up these water bodies as an, uh, to restorations of these water bodies, restorations and rejuvenations. So like, you know, in a Puducherry, what we did it, uh, we along with the Niri Nakur, we visited that place, understand, uh, we have taken the data from the departments, ki how much water bodies are there. When uh, And we just uh, also take in the help IT and uh, you can say that, you know, Googles and uh, data from the various places. And we find out, you know, ki how much number of water bodies were earlier there. We have in say, uh, done also the physical, you know, uh, survey and all these things. And then we have ident given a unique ID. So everybody has now the unique ID. It's like, you know, creating an Aadhaar card of water bodies. And then we have taken this initiatives ki out of this, let's suppose 516 water bodies, 10 water bodies should be rejuvenated and restorations. It's not about just like, you know, creating in a side infrastructure also. What are the channels? Because of that, the water bodies are getting recharged. So we have ensured that, you know, ki these are the things. And we need support from, uh, you know, uh, these... Uh, big companies or the CSR or individual also. It is not about that, you know, we can't say that an individual cannot contribute or even like, you know, the or your organization can also support us in this. Because these are the initiatives where we can say, okay, let's take up five water bodies. Let's take up that, you know, even a one single water bodies, even, uh, you know, in a city itself where the dumping places are there, we can take up these dumping places and convert these into an, uh, green parks or, you can say that, you know, uh, eco-sustainable park, even like, you know, supporting in a biodiversity. So, it's simple. You have put LED lights in your city. You put LED lights in the night and you put LED lights in the night. You think about how birds will sleep. So, birds can't sleep at night. They have a death. Because they can't sleep at night, so their death ratio will increase. So, even just... 
डिमिंग ऑफ ना लाइट और स्विचिंग ऑफ ऑन लाइट फ्रॉम यू नो ट्वेल्व रात के बारह बजे से लेके सुबह के चार बजे तक अगर आप करना चाहें दैट इज ऑल्सो जस्ट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन फॉर द इंटायर इको सिस्टम सो वेरी वेल सेड तो इफ यू ऑल एंगेज प्रोफेशनल आई एम श्योर यू वुड हैव लाइव प्रोजेक्ट्स फॉर आर स्टूडेंट्स definitely definitely because where it's not about just uh, doing a project in only in one particular state it can be done in a pan india it can be done globally and we just definitely look forward if all the associations uh, and especially you know we can tie up with research institutions uh, your uh, students and uh, your team can work along with us for you know spreading the awareness about these programs you have given me opportunity i really love this because because of this it may be a, because it's not because my initiative it is there it's no it's it's a initiative to support the our mother earth and we just want you know environmental concern is not you are seeing this you know we are have seen the extreme heat condition now you are seeing the extreme you know water conditions are getting even delhi is getting affected and all this thing so you know these initiatives and even like you know if you are ready to just support us in terms of you know awareness and campaigning of these programs definitely we would like to take up for all of this so i'll i'll write to you on this later my last question to you is now according to you what are the knowledge gaps and interventions that uh, our institute could uh, bridge in the industry i'm sure when you engage with professionals you would want them to know some certain basics or certain things when they engage with you so what are the knowledge gaps in the present um, uh, present scenario and for the future uh, uh, future candidates who want to enter this field what are the basic knowledge that they should have before uh, uh, they join initiatives like you or they get into carbon markets or they get into um, this field per se what what is that we can uh, train them see uh, the lots of research and the documentation has been done by the various institutions or the individual at their own level and if you look at like you know i recently met an one uh, you know uh, scholar she has developed uh, water percolating bricks she has done fantastic research related with that she has done that exercise unfortunately these are not taking up because of you know the reason uh, the knowledge the uh, experience what they have you know a scientist can do on a research they can make the prototype they can develop the product but they cannot market it you know it needs to be reached to an uh, right place so what we are trying to do it right now ki we have just asked her, why don't you share the details of your patented product she has has a patented product so when we reached to her she saying can why you are not uh, you know reaching to another department and asking that you who whatever be the water body rejuvenation projects are getting done these you know water percolating bricks needs to be incorporated in the, and this can be utilized for uh, you know uh, increasing even the water levels of our cities and uh, whatever be the we can it, it it can also help in terms of an uh, flood reductions in the uh, in terms of an a uh, city flood so whatever we have already concreted our city so these concrete should will absorb the waters and these things are you know not taking place because of you know there is a gap and these gap needs to be filled by uh, various institutions like you and the various scientists or researchers who has done their Uh, you know intervention these needs to be placed in the right way to the city officials or the departments heads or that you know organizational heads that they can take the decision and get it implemented i have also met you know various uh, you know researchers and scientists very small small interventions can make an, a big changes on that especially like you know it's not about just one uh, uh, technology intervention in the process interventions also so recently like you know uh, we uh, visited in odisha and where uh, these weavers are working so when we have interacted with these rural women and sgs women and uh, weavers we asked that you know how you do this exercise so they are using saying we are using the handloom practices from since almost like in you know, a uh, you know 70 80 years it's our parental systems and everything so we are okay fine from where you are getting these silks 
they are saying, you know, sir, sorry, we are importing. And it's very sad about that, you know, our handloom saris are getting made from the imported yarns. The reason is very simple because nobody is willing to go and cultivate these like, you know, the mulberry silk or whatever with the silk which is required or the silk cancuns which is required for, you know, productions of silk threads. And they are not ready to do this because of many reasons. And if we, let's suppose, want to do this, okay, okay let's in the next 40 hect hectares or 40 acres of the land, let's do the mulberry cultivation. It will drastically change that, you know, the entire ecosystem of that particular zone. Because we are placing so much of plant, we are ensuring, you know, uh, biodiversity, we are ensuring also about that, you know, local economic developments, we are also thinking about, you know, these initiatives. So these, these small things, people understand that it's only the big can be. No, no, no. So then we asked, you know, SHG woman, will you be able to take up these projects if we are willing to fund you? And will you cultivate this? She said, yes. They have, these FPO and SHG women are agreed. Okay, sir, you give us a plant and we will cultivate it. You know, so these are the very initiative. It's not about that. It's always be, you know, we need big uh, programs or big initiatives. It's always be, you know, small and, uh, but it's a, you know, uh, opportunity for that, you know, every individual who can participate in this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rajiv. Uh, any final message? And um, um, any questions, please do write it down in the chat box. And if you want to join the conversation, feel free to switch on the video and ask your questions. We really encourage that. So first, Hello. Uh, you final... Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yes, Mr. Hi, yes. Yeah. So my question is actually uh, we are working in the R and D sector, okay. So I want to implement the uh, environment ESG. Uh, from that environment, I want to implement. So how can we utilize this knowledge and uh, uh, what are the we learn from the starting point of our uh, production? Uh, it's very simple. What we will do it, we will just map out these your process, understand where and what kind of uh, consumption patterns you have what kind of an, uh, possibilities to reduce the carbon emissions and everything, starting from baseline to uh, reaching to one and a final, how these can be, you know, uh, immediately done and uh, what are the technology interventions are required, whether we require you know, some process management changes or anything that is you know, accountable. And so we will account each and everything and then accordingly we will guide. And if you need further more knowledge and information about this, Please, you can uh, take my numbers and uh, uh, discuss with my team. Harsa has all the necessary uh, informations. And uh, uh, I would love to be a part of all these uh, things. Anything which is required, I am really helpful. Uh, really, you know, I will try my level best to provide you the service. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Thank you, Vinod, for the question. Thank you, Mr. Joshi, also has a question. Yeah, uh, do it was a uh, nice uh, learning from you. And uh, just one question about methane. Uh, as you said, methane is the main uh, contributor for these carbon credits. So, uh, is there any uh, chance to, uh, based on science, that methane can be used as a fuel, and can it be burned in the system? So, uh, can it be reduced to the level? And it will it will yes. be it will be reused also. So there will not be yes. any pollution emission. Uh, yes. that is one question. And uh, shall I ask uh, immediate one uh, second one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Yeah. Another is uh, how this as you said knowledge uh, gaps are there and uh, implementation is a major challenge. So yes. how SBTI uh, is uh, supporting for this? How SBTI uh, is supporting for this? Okay, so let me first answer uh, uh, this about the methane. See, methane, uh, see, every, everybody is talking about the CO2 emission. Nobody is willing to even, you know, our approach and methodologies for claiming from the UNICEF, either through the CDM mechanism or methane, nobody counts. We have to even convert that into a CO2 form. When we say that 
uh, methane definitely it's an opportunity as an a fuel so that's the reason we say that uh, uh, whether it's uh, agricultural waste if you are dumping just an agricultural waste to any place it is going to emit the methane even like you know food aap hamare food mein jo agar aap do dino ke liye chhod do usme se jo smell aati hai that is also because of methane and it's a actually a uh, very noble you can say that it's a very noble gas which is which we can use as an a fuels because it's because of their properties it can easily handle it can uh, <coughs> so that's the reason whether it's a cbg plant we say that you know compressed biogas plant now we it is getting used uh, as an uh, one of the mechanism to capture these uh, you know uh, as an a fuel even for the solid waste management whenever if we are doing this what you call uh, uh i forget the name uh, sorry i forget the name so whenever we are doing you know uh, in a solid waste management like you know the biomethanization process so where we say that you know ki we are just actually uh, capturing these methane as an a fuel and now it's already started and uh, many of the industries are now going ahead and taking these methanes as an a fuel and they are supporting in terms of uh, uh, capturing of methanes and uh, using uh, using this as an a clean fuels uh, second in terms of an a knowledge gap uh, definitely i i i icsr sorry it's iicsr sorry i forget the name so uh, this gap is there and what we just need is that if we can develop some of the courses and these courses can be taken taken up to anana especially to the uh, ulb levels where that you know uh, urban at the urban local bodies or even for the institution and these certifications or programs can be supported by like an iits where this 8 months 9 months self learning certification program can be done along with the research which is research and the completion which is already been done by the various institutions and uh, this will create an entire ecosystem including because many uh, uh, you know every cities has now their own incubation every institutions and those startups and all this and we will just ensure that you know ki whatever be that the process or the technology which is already done under research has been already been done can be now rooted through these startup uh, eco system where the knowledge also not it's not only about the knowledge it's also about you know transferring of technology should also happen and it will become like in a win win situations for an example just i have already mentioned you that the uh, water percolating brick the scientist has already done this exercise now no uh let's suppose we are going to create you know uh, a one course which is about that you know uh sustainabilities of the cities with water percolating bricks and these programs can be initiated by your institutions where we can say look at this we have this technology which is already intervened now this technology is also ready to deploy we need an startup ecosystem we will include let's suppose 10 or 5 startups in the various cities and they will they are ready to manufacture these water percolating brick and they are ready to supply to the department then this entire ecosystem will work very well so the knowledge transfer of technology so ideas innovation and business all three things comes together and this we want you know this initiative should be taken by thank you thank you so much rajiv we shall uh, discuss on this separately after this call uh, any final message to all our viewers and what is the best way that they can reach out to you yeah uh, they can reach out directly through whatsapp or through email uh, i have i will share i will just ask you you can share with them and uh, i will say that you know just uh, wherever be the opportunities there for especially saving the mother earth please do it even starting from your own way like you know uh, small small steps like you know aadha glass pani agar aap pee rahe hain to please aadha glass pani hi lijiye छोटी छोटी चीजें हैं जो आपको इनिशिएट करना है और आई ऑलवेज से यू नो हमारे पास दूसरी लाइफ या अपॉर्चुनिटीज नहीं होगी वी आर नॉट श्योर वेदर वी विल बी एबल टू डू दिस सो लेट्स स्टार्ट फ्रॉम टुडे पीएम हैज ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड एन इनिशिएटिव्स वी कॉल 
एक पेड़ अपने माँ के नाम सो एट लीस्ट प्लांट वन ट्री विच इज देयर एंड सपोर्ट दीज इनिशियटिव हु एवर वी डूइंग हु एवर इज टेकिंग दीज इनिशियटिव just start taking and uh, just responsible as you have mentioned see in your i can see in your logo it's mention about and responsibilities so so just become a responsible ki yes i am an ecopreneur i am not going to uh, waste any kind of other things and uh, whatever will be the best polish possible way i will uh, you know support these ecosystems thank you thank you so much rajiv really appreciate your presence thank you vinod thank you mr joshi for joining us as well and uh, we wish you all the best and looking forward to collaboration so thank you so nice of you thank namaskar. you namaskar thank you thank you arsha